Shut up and sit down. Hi guys, I'm Dodge. This is Big Mac's workshop and paint studio and today we're going to be putting together one of the most in infamously difficult kits from Forge World and that's the Fire Raptor. Huge, huge amount of parts to go through with this. So um, looking at the box when you get it, it can seem kind of daunting but we're going to take you through it. It's not as difficult as it looks. It would help if these parts were straight um, but we use a hairdryer to straighten these out. A lot of people have used boiling water. I just find I get a lot more control heating up this middle section there with a um, hairdryer, but don't go over the top because it becomes very malleable after, after a while. And um, you don't want to bend it completely out of shape. You're going to need a few tools for this job. We're going to need some super glue, Games Workshop plastic glue, a hobby knife, a Stanley knife, pair of clippers and some fine grain sandpaper. Hopefully after this video you should be able to do this pretty well. So we're starting off with the sides because uh, they're the main parts here. You want the sides and the bottom and every time you put something together here we're going to dry fit this. So as you can see I'm dry fitting that seeing how well that lines up. Uh, this is the bent part but I've hit it with a hairdryer and uh, straightened that middle section out a little bit. It should just snap in straight here. And in this video, I don't use the middle support pieces because I find that Forge World parts, they, um, they never fit properly, it just makes it worse. So I've sanded down both edges. And remember, get all your flashing and all your stuff off here because you'll thank yourself for it in the end. Then we're going to use the plastic part, the Fire Raptor kit part that comes with it. And um, we're going to snap fit that in to make sure that both the sides line up at the top as well as the bottom. As you'll see in a second, I'm just going to pop this back out. See, I've missed a bit of flash in there. You can see where the spruce still is. Uh, so I'm going to hit that with the fine sandpaper because that's going to show up on your paint job. And when you spend this much money on a kit, you, you're going to want to put in that extra effort and make it look good. Now before gluing in the top part, we're actually going to glue the door in because it fits in easier. I actually built this without any instructions whatsoever. Uh, it's got it out of the box. Um, according to some people, it's a very advanced kit. It's not that bad. But back where I was just putting glue, that takes quite a bit of sanding occasionally. And as you can see, I'm sliding it in there, which is why we haven't put the roof on. Using these parts and a bit of care, <clears throat> making sure you hold so the it bonds properly you can get this to go pretty straight all the way through and if I'd done this with the main supports in I have a lot more chance of bending and distorting because the uh, measurements are slightly off Forge World sort it out then I'm going to glue the door in because uh, there's no actual clips to make these hatches I suppose if I really wanted to I could have put a paper clip through there made some um, hinges that actually work Again, just uh, put the, you want to put your glue on the inside as much as possible so when you uh, seal stuff down it doesn't leak through. You don't want that on your uh, kit. But inevitably it does happen occasionally when you little lapse of concentration. And this bit definitely needs dry fit and this is your engine parts. I had to do quite a bit of um, carving with the hobby knife to open that up so that popped in and it's a really snug fit. That was just plastic glue by a games workshop running around the inside edge and now we're using super glue to run around the inside edge actually it took me two attempts to put the back end of the engine on because the um, glue didn't contact properly excuse me while I drink some of this monster I'm inclined to agree with quite a few people, it can be a pain kit to put together. It take like a day to clean it all up. See what happened with this one. You should be able to figure out which way these go on. But the pipes on them, they were too long, wouldn't fit in. And again, the super glue on the inside of the joint so it doesn't show up at all. I've obviously had to speed this up because it took quite some time. But remember guys, double check your working every time and do several dry fits. Now Andy pointed this out to me because I nearly cut these little notches off um, because of the way the sprue's built. It looks like bits of flashing and bits of sprue. They're not. If you pay atten uh, close attention to it, one of them's longer than the other one. 
and the reason for that is when they stick on the side one of them connects to the inside of the chassis there and then there's a, a raised bit on that chassis and that's where the little one goes so don't make that mistake that's an easy one to miss and mess up but um, I think it's a very nice detail adds a bit more depth to the model then we're going to go ahead and put the wing supports on but on this build I'm not putting the wings on because I want to paint them separately because we're using an airbrush um, there'll be a paint tutorial for this there's already a white scars fire raptor up on our channel uh, there's not the marines one coming out when I was, as I'm working on this one a lot of fine sandpaper was used for this dry fitting it sanding it down again dry fitting it and uh, you can see the wings don't go on straight but if you go over that a few times with a hairdryer till it really heats up and then just bend it ever so slightly but you've got to hold it in place as it sets so it um, dries the shape that you want it to now it's really important to go inside edge and do the plastic with this one because if that drips down it just drips into the groove of the wing and you're not going to see that so even if you did make a mistake there it would cover that up I want to make sure that bonds really well seeing as it's going to be the part that um, supports the entire wall the wall uh, supports the entire engine and you don't want that falling off pipes never quite fitted again I hit those with the hairdryer then forced them into place as they were soft let them reset and then took them back out again so now I should have a real nice fit basically just super glue in the groove where you're not going to see it and then I put a little bit of super glue on the back end of the uh, pipe that goes into the notch at the top. And as you can see, that's a nice snug fit now. I've done that with the hairdryer. Just be really careful not to melt your resin, guys. Um, going overboard is quite easy. I was surprised how malleable it becomes after you warm it up a little bit. Now we're back to the uh, plastic kits. I've already stuck the bottom part of the wing on. Uh, they only go on one way so you should be okay with that one uh, just make sure you put your missiles in the right way and check the way the wings go because they look a, they're a bit odd the shape of the wings and can get a bit confusing so double check that they go on the right way and your missiles are pointing the right way you don't want to be shooting your own guys the, these are pretty simple but they did require quite a bit of sanding um, I actually didn't get this to bond the first time I did it. Putting the glue on the inside here doesn't quite work because the bit is supposed to bond to underneath never quite fits properly or at least it didn't with this kit so putting it on there didn't work you'd probably have more success putting it on the top part that I'm now connecting it to so it um, pulls over ever so slightly and makes that bond see this time I went a bit more around the outer edge to uh, make sure it bonded properly This again has to be hit with a hairdryer to uh, make it snap fit properly. And super glue, there's a little lip on it, as you can see there. Super glue on the inside of that. Trying to get that in the groove and on the outside there, on the raised bit, so um, you get as much bond as possible. You spend it forever putting this kit together, the last thing you want is bits falling off of it. But if Forge World or someone from Forge World ever watches this video, it's fix this kit up a little bit you know make it a bit straighter made a mistake here the first gun went in I didn't dry fit the other one so I put the super glue in and then had to go back in later on and uh, fix that up because it just simply would not go in I spent like 20 minutes cutting the um, groove into there first one went in fine which wasn't a problem but again it's, it's all cleaning up guys and being really patient with this kit these are easy to put on the wrong way around also which is why they're on the video they actually go on pointing forwards I think there's some form of um, air brake or something that's what me and Andy can come up with they come out to slow the uh, ship down but I was going to put them on the other way Andy was going to put them on the other way on the last one he built and we were even debating whether or not someone at Forge World had put them on the wrong way because it just looks odd but all we can figure is they must be air brakes or something but they point forward so remember that and dry fit that first because you're going to see that seam on it 
Now, I love the fact Forge World has put in the um, gun pilot. It's great, but they do not supply you with a, um, a part that goes over it that's transparent, so it does seem a bit mundane. Now, these pretty much fitted for this kit without any effort, um, but you want to make sure you get them on the right side. Something Andy was pointing out is um, you put them on the wrong side and try and clip it to your model, the guns are pointing upwards, which just looks a bit ridiculous really. The auto cannon, I think it's an auto cannon, comes with a little peg, which is great for lining up, it makes life a lot easier. The bolters don't, which is a bit odd. The guy whose kit this is is asking me to magnetise this, so that's going to take me some time. Uh, if I can even do it at all with the way that it's, with the way it's built, I don't have any random pieces of uh, metal to put in there at the moment. See, if you put it on the other way around, you end up shooting upwards, and that's no good. Now, this is the bit I want to make out of um, acrylic or some form of transparent plastic, so you could see the pilot. You could just add more character to your gunship, or maybe you could um, glue it so it's open. But uh, this at the moment is a commission, it's not something that's been requested, I'd have to charge more to paint the guy in the middle. There is a little notch fit at the bottom that goes in first and then the hinges at the top, they just lay on. So for this last bit of video guys, I'm basically dry fitting everything. So as you can see I've already started painting the kit. I'm going to paint these um, gun turret bits uh, blue with red and white stripes down the middle because it's an ultramarine. Uh, fire Raptor at this point but they actually fit really well because of the little snap fit part the little hinge really helps and then those line up pretty easy as long as you make sure you get them on the right side you should be fine as you can see that's not too difficult I'm going to dry fit it a few times just trying to do that when you put super glue on uh, there's not going to be much room for any moving around because it's going to set faster and then the uh, bolt guns overlap the front bit a little bit at least I think they do, I haven't been able to get them on yet they're never quite sculpted right but uh, obviously like I'm showing you hurricane, I mean the auto cannons, they point down and they pin in really well <laughs> It's really up to you with the eighth rules, uh, what you put in. Um, this part runs along the underside of the ball turret. I'll show you that a bit more in depth in a second. You can see where that's supposed to clip on. The long beam across that semicircle, that's going to be removed. And then it should connect to those pegs here. And as you can see, there's guide holes for that. So you'd peg those in before you put the ball turret on and then you just glue the ball turret to it and you should be able to twist them left and right. And that's all we've got time for in this video. I hope all these uh, little pointers help you out while building your Fire Raptor. Uh, if you're still not sure about your Fire Raptor, you can always contact us on Facebook or on any of our other social media. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to share on Facebook, hit like, hit subscribe and I will see you in the next one.